Hey everybody, this is Randy Brown for Camming Man 2021 and the Mayor of Magic. Here are eight ways to beat depression and grief. Number one, binaural beats and hypnosis. Uh, what you need to know, binaural beats and hypnosis are pretty much the same thing, and they have binaural beats and hypnosis for everything. If you want to be a writer, they got binaural beats and hypnosis for creativity. If you want to be happier, they've got binaural beats for happiness, motivation, whatever. If you haven't tried hypnosis and you're on the fence about it, try it, because I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I was having severe pain in my teeth, like I was having a total, total, really bad toothache, and I listened to hi hypnosis to heal tooth pain, and guess what? It worked. So again, they have bi binaural beats for creativity, they have binaural beats for depression, they have binaural beats for grief, and that would be my number one tip if you want to beat depression and grief. Number two, avoid circular thinking. and what. I'll tell you, there's one word that encourages circular thinking, which is what you don't want to do, and that word is why. Cut why out when you're thinking about your problems, because usually why states a presupposition, which is something you don't want. Because a lot of people ask why, and they ask, like, why am I so stupid? And your mind, you know, ask and you shall receive. Your mind comes up with an answer. It says, because you're a moron, which is not true. And then... Your mind will ask, why can't I lose weight? And it'll be because say, because you're a pig, which is not true either. You can lose weight. There are uh, ways to lose weight. You're not a moron. So avoid asking why. Avoid those circular questions that lead you around in a circle and right back to where you started with. Number three, read. For the love of God, read a book. You know, Oprah has a weekly book club. And in that book club, she brings people on and they say, this book changed my life, that book changed my life, that book changed your life. You need to read. Leaders are readers. And if you're not reading, you're doing yourself a major disservice. And if you want to be a writer, you got to read. You know, if you want to write a book, you can't just sit around and not read anything. You're, you're not going to go far with that attitude. If you want to be a writer, you need to read. And if you want to learn a new skill, you need to read. And, uh, and if you're a Bible reader, you can read the Bible. And here's what I do. I make a chapter list. I go chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and all the way through to the chapters. And then as soon as I'm done finishing the chapter, I draw a line through that. And then I draw a line through another one. And then the next day, I look at my list. And I go, oh, I knocked off all these chapters. Why don't I knock off another two? Let's see if I can do another two. And before you know it, you're done with the book. I've knocked off a ton of chapters of the Bible. I've knocked down a ton of books doing that uh, listing thing. Number four, learn a new skill. There are tons of websites where you can go online and you can learn a new skill. You could learn magic. You could learn how to write. Uh, you could learn to memorize stuff. Uh, you could learn to become a CNA. They have all these courses on uh, things like Udemy, Skillshare, and again, Audible. Audible is books on uh, tape, and if if you want to learn something really quick, you know, use Audible. And you know what what's great about Audible is that you can, you can set the speaking speed to three times the normal speaking speed, and it sounds really fast. But you you'll still be able to understand a new thing, and you'll get a you'll breeze through a three hour book in an hour going at three times speed, so check that out. And then YouTube, you can learn anything on YouTube. What I would do is if you want to learn something, like, hey, just type in, want to read a novel, and then just go down the YouTube list and click watch later, watch later, watch later on all the things you want to do, and then when you got time, sit down, and then just go through your watch later list, and you have a, a list of all these videos, and you could just knock it out like that, and you could learn super quick and simply, and you didn't even have to pay for anything. Hey, YouTube is free. You don't need uh, Udemy. You don't need Skillshare. But if you wanted to go, go to Udemy or Skillshare, Udemy is an online learning course. Um, a lot of the courses there, I, I've taken tons of magic courses, goal setting courses. I uh, got my NLP practitioner certificate. Uh, like, you can go to all these courses, and a lot of these courses, if you buy them at the right time, maybe 12 bucks, 13 bucks, 14 bucks, 
and you can sit there and you can learn and you know if you're learning that's going to overcome your grief that's going to overcome your depression you know progress equals happiness think about it like that if you're not progressing you're not going to be happy progress learn some stuff go to udemy go to skillshare 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 is basically 10 bucks a month and they have tons of videos on stuff you can learn and whatever and again youtube audible they're both there uh, number five and this is only for people who are overweight but number five is take advantage of your lack of ap appetite if you're overweight and you don't feel like eating don't eat you don't have to eat if you're overweight yeah you know what use that lack of appetite and just knock off 10 or 20 pounds. Now, you don't want to be more than 10 pounds underweight, but like if you're like 50 pounds overweight and you don't feel like eating, don't eat. You don't have to. Nobody's saying you have to. If if you just, you know, have a glass of water now and then and you know, maybe like a little a little snack, nobody says you have to eat. Number 6 is focus on what you want, not on what you lost. Because here's the thing, if you ever watch Dr. Phil, I'm a Dr. Phil junkie, if you listen to his talks, you know, like, for the first half of the show, he gets into, here's what uh, Amy is saying her problem is, here's what Dave's saying Amy's problem is, and he gets both sides. But, you know, halfway through the show, and if you look for it, you'll always see this, halfway through the show, he asks them, just flat out, what do you want? You want to avoid circular thinking, asking why. Why am I so fat? Why am I a moron? Why am I this? Why am I that? If you want a good question, figure out what is it that I really want? And then there's some questions that go along with that, like how do you get it? What do you have? What do you need? And, you know, if you focus on those questions, it's going to take you in a much better direction than thinking, oh, why am I a moron? Why am I fat? Why can't I write a book? Why can't I stay on my, why can't I get a job? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? So focus on what you want. And there's four things that you really need when you set a goal, all right? And if you're focusing on what you want, you're focusing on your goals. So number one, be specific. You know, if you want a job, be specific, but don't be too specific. Don't say, I want this one particular job and only this job. And because if you don't get it, you're going to screw yourself. You're going to say, oh, well, I didn't get that job. I'm a failure. Be specific. Now, I know somebody, and the reason he doesn't have the job he wants is because he doesn't know what he wants. He goes, I want something in an airline industry. Oh, I'd love to be an editor. Oh, I'd love to be a director. I'd love to do this. I'd love to do that. Here's the thing. If you're not specific, you don't know where to put your focus. And if you split your focus, you know, if you're putting 25% of your effort into this thing and 25% of your effort into that thing and 25% of your effort into this thing and 25% of in this thing, you're not going to be able to do an excellent job at 25% going for this, 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 and this. You're not going to be able to do that. You need to focus on one specific job career and you need to be specific and you need to be focused and you want to figure out what your ROI is. What will benefit me the most? Which job? You know, like, if I, I could be a director, but I have to move to L.A., that'd take a lot of time, be a big move. You know, I could be an airline attendant. Well, you know what? I really like to travel. It'd be good pay. I'd have health care. I'd have this. I'd have that. So you don't want to split your focus. You need to figure out exactly what it is you want to do, because if you can't figure out what you want to do, you're... you're Again, you're going to be split focus, and if you try to ride two horses at the same time, you fall off both. If you're aiming an arrow, and you're aiming between two targets, you're, you're going to hit air. You're not going to hit anything. So number one, know what you want. Do you want to be an airline for uh, American Airlines? Do you want to be a director for Warner Brothers? Figure out what you want. And if you have a tough time, just make a list and then roll the dice and whatever number uh, job you pick, there it is. That's an easy way to figure it out. If, you, if you're undecided and you can't figure it out, roll the dice. Number two, set a deadline. Number two goes hand in hand with number three, set milestones. Now once you set a deadline, you're going to know what your milestones are. Like for example, if you want to write a book and you want that book to be 365 pages. Well, guess what? If you write a page a day, 
uh, for 365 days, you're going to hit your goal in a year. Oh, but let's say you want to do half that. If you write two pages a day, you're going to write that book in half a year. If you write three pages a day, you're going to cut your time into thirds. Instead of six months, it'll take three months. So be specific. Say, I want to write a book that's 365 pages. Set a deadline. You know, I want to have it done by the end of the year. I'm starting on whatever day. Set milestones. Your deadlines determine your milestones. Because again, let's say you wanted to write a script in 90 days. Well, you know what? A normal script is 90 pages long. So write a page a day for three months and boom, you're there. Let's say you want to do that in two months. Well, guess what? Write two pages a day and then you're done. Or you could write three pages a day and you'll, have, you'll knock out that script in a month. So it's very, very simple. Be specific, set deadlines, set milestones, and number four, take the first step. No matter how big or small it is, you know, like let's say you want to write a screenplay and you don't know how to write a screenplay, well, you know, do that watch list on YouTube and watch a bunch of videos on how to write a screenplay. And then take the first step and write two, one or two or three pages. You know, it can be small steps, but just do it. Number seven, use net time. What is net time? Net time stands for no extra time. And what net time is, is whatever you're doing, you can learn while you're doing it. You can listen to audible audiobooks, or you could listen to a video on YouTube, but you know what? You could kill two birds with one stone. You could exercise and listen to YouTube. You can uh, drive your car to, on the way to your work and listen to an audiobook. You can, you know, walk around the park and listen to an audiobook at the same time. Now, all these things, you're doing two things at the same time. If you're taking a walk around the park and listening to an audiobook, you know what? You are learning and you are exercising at the same time. So you're killing two birds with one stone. How cool is that, man? Number eight, this is the final one. Don't forget self-care, all right? You need to take care of yourself. If you're depressed and you're grieving, the number one thing you need to focus on is yourself. And there are several different things you can do. I listed 14 here. So number one, you can take a hot shower. Number two, you can go swimming. Number three, you can drink your favorite drink. Personally, if you're grieving and if you're depressed, I wouldn't drink alcohol because it could make you more depressed and more grief and uh, alcohol you know, inhibits your good decision-making abilities. But if you want a nice cup of java, if you want a nice cold coke, if you want a you know hot piping cup of tea, go ahead and knock yourself out. Number four, mini golf. I know lots of people like to play mini golf or sports in general. You know, you can do whatever. Number five, get a massage. I used to have a skin rash, so I can't get a massage at a normal masseuse. But I can go on down to the mall, and they have massage chairs in there. You slip twenty bucks in there, that sets you for an hour and I just go to the mall and I lay in that chair and for an hour I am just oh my god it's so fun so much fun number six sleeping you know what there's nothing wrong with sleeping as long as you're not you know slacking off at your job sleep however much you want you know don't worry about it I I give you permission you know here's another thing about sleeping when you're sleeping you're not eating so if you're not eating you are going to reach your weight loss goals. If you're more than 10 pounds uh, overweight, you might want to, you know, maybe cut out a meal here. You know, you might want to sleep instead of eating. Number seven, exercise. Exercise is great. So 88, play a video game. If you like video games, knock yourself out. You know, and you could even do it on Twitch. You could do it with a friend. Number nine, talk on the phone. You got a good friend, talk to him on the phone, see what he thinks, you know. Uh, number 10, go to your favorite nightclub. Like, I, I go to my favorite nightclub all the time, and, you know, it de-stresses me. I have so much fun, and I recently just made 20 bucks uh, doing magic down at my favorite restaurant. Number 11, go to the coffee shop. If you like coffee, it's a good place. Coffee shops are a good place to meet good women. Strike up a conversation, say hi, and introduce yourself, and you never know where it might lead. Uh, 12, dance. If you want to dance, just go on YouTube, pop on your favorite tune, and just get down and boogie sometime. Number 13, pray. Pray about your situation. Pray to God, whatever you can. Finally, 14, read the Bible. All right? And if you're a Bible reader, here's a good practice. 
go through the Bible, list all the Bible books, there's only 66, list them off, and then, you know, if you want to go for a short chapter, if you want a quick read, find a short Bible book, then knock that off the list. And I'm reaching my goals as far as Bible reading. Once more, I'm going to give a little recap. Uh, number one, binaural beats and hypnosis. Number two, avoid circular thinking, which is asking why. Number three, read. For the love of God, read, especially if you want to be a reader. If you can't read, you won't be able to write well. Number four, learn a new skill on Udemy, YouTube, Skillshare, Audible. Number five, take advantage of your lack of appetite. If you're overweight, you don't have to eat if you don't want to. Number six, focus on what you want, not on what you lost, all right? There's still people alive that care about you and want you to do well. And, you know, if you're single, you know, you need to put the forth the effort so you can get that woman and you need a good job, you need a steady income. Number seven, use net time. You know, listen to an audiobook while you exercise. Listen to an audiobook while you walk. Number eight, don't forget self-care, all right? Do whatever you can to help yourself stay happy. Do whatever you can to stay healthy and in shape. And that's the end. And my name's Randy Brown. I do the card tricks, but you bring the magic. All right, bye.